Hey, what's up, nerds? This is Chesh here from Command of the Gathering, bringing you another deck tech. This time it is going to be Azur the Enchanter, Tokyo Drift. Now, before I go into it, just remember, hit that subscribe button if you like this. Don't forget to make a comment down below. Visit our affiliates, puremtgo.com. There will be an article about this on there that will be longer than this video, most likely about 2,000 words. And use Cheshire 10 at checkout when you go to inkgaming.com. All right. Well, now that we've got that out of the way and I'm knocking stuff in the background over, Zer the Enchanter is uh, hated in the format and, and regularly hated out. And I'll explain why. So for one colorless, one white, one blue, and one black, we get a legendary creature, Human Wizard, uh, which is a 1-4 flyer. And uh, whenever Zer the Enchanter attacks, you may search your library for an enchantment card with a converted mana cost of three or less and put it onto the battlefield. And if you do, shuffle your library. That's pretty cool. Now, white and blue have some of the most spectacular enchantments in the history of magic. So what are we going to go and pull up? Well, I'm happy you asked. The first we could look at is... Likely, I'm so sorry, is Curator's Ward. This is two colors and a blue. How about that? Is that better? Okay, great. Uh, for an enchantment aura, enchant permanent. Enchanted permanent has hexproof. Now, note it says permanent. We can chuck this on whatever we want. Not just on Zer, although prime target, really. But we can chuck it on some of our other combo please pieces to make sure that people don't use targeted removal and uh, kill it. Basically, destroy our stuff that we need for our combo stuff. All right. So when the Enchanted Permanent leaves the battle, if it was historic, draw two cards. That means if it was an artifact, a legendary, uh, or a saga, which we're not playing any sagas, so don't worry about that particular nonsense. We also have Imprisoned in the Moon, so two colors and one blue for an enchantment or an enchant creature, land, or planeswalker. And it becomes a colorless land with tap to add one colorless to your mana pool. It loses all other types and abilities. Great for playing on somebody's commander if it's problematic and getting rid of it. We are playing blue. What would we be doing if we weren't asking, do you want to pay the one? That's right. Ristic Studies is two colorless and one blue. And whenever an opponent plays a spell, you can draw a card unless that player pays one generic mana. We, of course, have Ghostly Prison. Uh, we do actually have Propaganda as well. I've got a copy that I'm trying to find. It's somewhere in a box. But uh, this is two colors and one white. The opposite for the blue one. It's obviously two colors and one blue. Enchantment with creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two for each creature that that player controls, that they, pop, they control, uh, that's attacking you. So it helps us to kind of lock down the game. Here is why this is called Tokyo Drift. Now, we're probably going to have to discuss this separately in just a second once we're done with these enchantments, but there's two reasons to have this in here. Now, the first one is, as you can see here, whenever you cycle Astral Drift or cycle another card while Astral Drift is on the battlefield, you can exile target creature. If you do, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. We are not playing a heap of targets for this. We are playing like three or four targets for this because we're going to be using this defensively when we need to to keep in the game until we're ready to go off. This is going to help us stay alive. Speaking of staying alive, we have a grindy faith of the devoted that uh, good old Zer can also kind of grab for us. This is one black and two colors for an enchantment. Whenever you cycle or discard a card, you can pay one colors mana, and if you do, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. This keeps us in the game. This damages all the opponents that can close our games pretty quickly with what we've got going on. Drake Haven, again, another grindy card. This is two colors and one blue for an enchantment. Whenever you cycle or discard a card, pay one. If you do, create a 2-2 blue Drake creature with flying. Because we're going to be cycling a whole bunch of stuff, we of course want to capitalize on drawing cards. So Psychic Corrosion is the first one that's going to help us. This is a two colors and one blue. Whenever you draw a card, each opponent puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. We'll, we'll again talk more about this in just a second because we're running 43 cycling cards. That's 
We, of course, also have a copy of Sphinx's Tutelage. Although not as good as Psychic Corrosion, this is the same mana cost, of course. Two colors and one blue. Whenever you draw a card target, opponent puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. If they're both non-land cards that share a color, repeat this process. Now, look at that. For six mana, you can then draw a card and discard a card. We're not going to do that. We don't care about that. Uh, but we do care about milling out monocolored decks or using this as a political talk piece so that we can kind of keep opponents off their game. Now, cycling is pretty cool, but how are we going to enable the cycling? What is our engine? How are we going to do it? Our first one is, of course, Fluctuator. This artifact costs two generic mana. Cycling costs you up to two generic mana less to play. Now, some cycling, or at least most, it's going to make it free. Some of it's still going to have a colored mana you're going to have to pay, which is fine because we're a three colored deck anyway. The other one is New Perspectives, which is completely bonkersly different, but six mana. So five colors and one blue. When New Perspectives enters the battlefield, you get to draw three cards. As long as you have seven or more cards in your hand, you may pay zero rather than pay cycling costs. So we can essentially free cycle the 43 cycling cards in the deck. That is pretty massive. That means that when Psychic Corrosion goes off, and let's say that we cycle most of that 43, we'll say 40, there's actually ways to do 80, uh, then we're going to be making people mill like between 80 and 160 cards. And that is just one of the ways that we are going to kill people. Now, speaking about how Astral Drift works, we only have three targets. We've got Mole Drifter so that we can keep drawing two cards during each of our turns, or at least, I guess, at the end of our turn. You know what I mean. We've got Monk Idealist, because Monk Idealist can get us back our uh, enchantment cards from our graveyard to our hand, so if they do destroy some of our combo pieces or our kill pieces, then we can get them back. And, of course, the same with Sun Titan also, because Sun Titan has, whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, you can return target permanent card with a converter mana cost of three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Now, remember, this means cycling lands as well, because they have a converted mana cost of the zitch, the zilps, the zeros. Cycling cards. I don't think we want to go through all of these, to be honest. Um, maybe I can just... Pull this out a little bit. Oh, no, wrong one. And then, oh, wrong way. Okay, we can't. <sighs> That's my fault. Uh, so we've got Imaginary Threats. We've got uh, Razaketh's Right because it also doubles as a tutor. Uh, we have Lurching Rot Beast because it's a beast and it's lurching, but it costs us one black. We have Wander and Death because uh, having our cards do two things is pretty cool. Vile Manifestation, you can kill somebody with this at some point if you really want to try, but, I mean, desperation. Street Wraith, of course. Scarab Feast, because it allows us to exile three cards from a target graveyard, which is uh, quite handy against some zombie decks and stuff if we need to, if we panic. We have Horror of the Broken Lands, again, can be used to kill people, but generally we're not going to worry about it because we want to cycle it first. Decree of Pain. Uh, this is a great way to actually fill your hands with a crap load of cards and just completely go off. Expunge, of course, just so we can destroy target non-artifact, non-black creature that can't be regenerated. We've got the Archfiend of Ifnir, because whenever we cycle or discard another card, we can put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature your opponents control. Not one, each. Unburden. Don't worry about it. Floodwaters, because we can return up to two target creatures to their owner's hands. We have Complicate, to complicate things by countering people's spells unless they pay three. When you cycle it, you may counter target spell unless its controller pays one. So that also can be pretty cool. We have our Stifle Effect, of course, in our Nimble Obstructionist. We've got another creature, a Striped Riverwinder. Creator of Mysteries. Now, this you don't generally want to cycle unless you can get it back, because we're going to be using this so that whenever we cycle it, discard another card. We get to scry one, which is actually quite important when you're trying to fool around with the scrying stuff. 
It is a thing. It is very much a thing. They should be over there. We've got Vizier of the Tumbling Sands. When you cycle it, you can untap uh, another, well, untap a target permanent, but uh, you can actually play it to untap another target permanent. So it's fine. I mean, it can get you some extra mana. Uh, we have, of course, the Cannabomb. Cannavailing wins. Can a target spell unless its controller plays one for each card in your graveyard, which is usually going to be lots. We've got Illumination so that we can draw some cards. A Shimmer Scale Drake. Lay claim so that we can actually gain control of an enchanted permanent. Well, enchant permanent and take control of it, you know what I mean? Ancient Excavation is a bit interesting. Uh, so there's usually going to be somebody with a big hand at your table, which is great. Especially great when your psychic corrosion goes off and you Ancient Excavation them. There's actually a couple of wheels in the deck list down below as well and ways to draw cards. We've got Hollow One, Forsake the Worldly, because removal... Angel of the God, Pharaoh, uh, Acroma's Vengeance, because sometimes you just need to reset everything. Doris Resolve, Aketra's Attendant. We do have Cast Out, which is obviously a white for recycling, which I wish it wasn't, but that's fine. This is because, again, it's just the best cycling removal out there. We, of course, have a Decree of Justice so that we can kill somebody with a whole bunch of little 4-4 four, four angels. Okay, sure, they're not little, but if we need to, we can actually also cycle this and create a whole bunch of 1-1 uh, one, one white soldier creature tokens. Lonely Sandbar. Good. Remote Isle, Desert of the Mindful, Desert of the Glorified, Polluted Mire, Barren Moor, Secluded Step, Drifting Meadow, Deserts of the True, Fetid Pools, Irrigated Farmland, Ash, Barrens, because basic land cycling helps us adjust our mana because we're not playing any fetch lands, and Blasted Landscape. So that is 43 cycling cards. And I know what you're saying, like, oh, well... That's all great, but how are we going to double cycle? Well, that's where this little dude comes in. So, Shadow of the Grave is one colors and one black. Return to your hand all cards in your graveyard that you cycled or discarded this turn. So, if your opponent catches you off guard, they're going to remove your discard pile from the game before this even resolves. So hopefully that doesn't happen. So bear in mind that you don't want to cycle anything that will allow you to get rid of your opponent's, um, say, Tormod's Crypt, etc. Just be very, very mindful because that can be very painful. There's still ways that you can win, and we'll get to those in a second. And of course, Abandoned Sarcophagus. So if you do have to panic and cycle, you'll at least still get to use those cards once Abandoned Sarcophagus comes down. So that's another way that we can replay uh, cycling cards in our graveyard that we've had to cycle. We said about tutors, so there's Razak, that's right, but there's also one DT, Demonic Tutor, of course. If you don't know this card, you should familiarize yourself with tutors in this particular format and good and bad. We have, of course, a Whir of Invention. We don't really have the Improvise for it, but we don't need it. We're just gonna use this basically to get us Fluctuator every time if we can. We have ways to kill our board. Living Death is one way. So each player exiles all creature cards from his or her or their graveyard, then sacrifices all creatures that they control, then puts all cards that they exile this way onto the battlefield. Now, if we're just gonna like cycle basically most of our deck and then play this, we're gonna get a whole stack of creatures back into play, which is real nice. We're drawing a whole bunch of cards. So of course, Psychosis Crawler here is gonna come down and wreak some havoc for five colors. Man, we get an XX. It has power and toughness equal to the number of cards in your hand. Whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. Now, again, considering we've got 43 cycling cards in a way to draw other stacks of cards, this is actually pretty great for us. Last but not least, we are playing white, and I am Cheshire, so of course I'm going to play Approach of the Second Cycling. Astral Drift is one of those things. This particular Tokyo Drift deck is going to draw us a bunch of cards, so we can... You can, I have hard cast this for 14, 
don't even ask. It was a terrible, terrible long game. Uh, but there is ways that you can basically speed this into your hand again so that uh, you can just play it on the next turn and win the game. That is it. That is the Tokyo Drift. I hope you've enjoyed this. Remember to go and share this and comment and like and all that great stuff. And uh, I will be back maybe next week with another Commander Deck Tech. I am Chesh. Have fun.